Hi, I'm Wade Harvey. I want to thank you for uh, taking the time to watch this uh, quick overview of how to use Ideal SQL Tracer. Ideal SQL Tracer is like SQL Profiler, except uh, it allows you to, uh, in addition to grabbing the uh, SQL behind uh, a web page or a desktop application, uh, what Ideal SQL Tracer does is uh, put all the SQL in a notepad and formats it for you so you can easily copy it over to SQL Server Management Studio to run it over there so this can help you in debugging. So we'll start out with um, uh, at GitHub if you have an account uh, you can clone uh, this uh, uh, branch and if you don't you can just download the zip so after you've downloaded it, you will uh, put it into, uh, you click on the solution file and uh, create a project. That will create a project in uh, Visual Studio. And then you can uh, build, it, uh, debug, uh, you can run it in debug mode for just for this demonstration purposes and you'll be presented with a series of screens what we're going to do I'm going to I have this desktop application sorry I clicked on the wrong button I have this desktop application called Ideal Automate and I want to grab the SQL just for demonstration purposes when I click on this save button uh, th this desktop application allows you to easily launch your, your applications that you have on your computer. So that's the goal. So the first uh, dialog screen that comes up is uh, for domain name. If you're at work, uh, they use the Active Directory. And in that Active Directory, there's a list of all the uh, uh, domain, for the domain, uh, there's a list of all the SQL servers. So this is allows you to populate a drop-down list on the next uh, dialog that will um, include all the servers. In my case, I, I didn't have a, a, I'm at home, so I, I left that field blank and it just found the SQL servers that are on my home computer. It found SQL Express. If it, I have another one that it was not finding for some reason, I could type it in here, uh, my hidden uh, SQL server. But in this case, it found it, so I can just leave that uh, blank. And it would have overridden it if I had said my hidden SQL server here. But since it found it, uh, we're OK. So I click OK after selecting server. Now we need to select the database. So it found that these are the databases in my SQL Express at home. So the database that's used in my uh, desktop application is called Ideal Automate DB. So that, um, I'll select that. And then we have two important folders. Uh, we don't go to these folders. Uh, SQL Server just writes output that is used uh, in a, for like a temp file. Uh, that we pick up, the, this Ideal SQL tracer picks up and formats the output, goes through that and gets all the uh, SQL that was generated. And, but the important thing here is that the SQL server is writing to these files. So if I'm uh, using SQL Express, it'll go to the local output. So I need to set up a folder where this trace can be written and I need to give SQL Server permission to write to that folder, to, for that file in the folder. If I was at work, uh, the SQL Server would be on a remote server, and uh, I would need uh, to give uh, SQL Server permission to write uh, to uh, some kind of network share because it, uh, it's the C drive on a remote is not pointing to my computer. It's out. Uh, so usually, what you need is to point to a network share, where you have the rights to tell to allow SQL Server to write this trace file out there. So we're all set on this dialog page. Now we have one more, 
And uh, the first thing it says, uh, you must, uh, if not using localhost, localhost is used for web sites. So uh, I'm debugging a, or tracing a desktop application, so I'm not using that, so I'm going to uncheck that. If I had it checked, it would only filter things that are running under W3WP, which is where localhost runs, and DLL host only gets the comms that are associated with local hosts. So that's a uh, really puts a, a filter for when you're doing a website under local host. But if you were not using local host, you want to uncheck it or else you won't get any results. So the next uh, thing are the filters you can add. In, uh, in SQL Profile, you have tons of filters, but uh, I only uh, included three that I found important for me uh, in uh, reducing the noise when I'm doing queries. So these are the application name, the NT uh, username, and text data. So uh, I found that the NT username uh, is, uh, I can't just specify my name, It's uh, I use that for excluding other people's names that are running batch jobs in the background and stuff so to help reduce noise. So, whenever, if you don't want to use any filters, you can just change this select to select. And whenever it sees select as the first, uh, it, it, in a column, it stops doing any filters after that point. But I'm, I want to use filters. Uh, these are bogus filters just for demonstration purposes, but uh, so I'm saying if the applications like uh, uh, N uh, or Micro, then I want that, or if it's like Entity, then I want it. Uh, the first time you use a column, you use an N. Uh, it's a little confusing, this logical operator. So it starts out before you even start. It's selected on your database, Ideal Automate DB in my case. And so the for for each column when you first start it, you're always going to use and. But then depending on what you're doing after that, you might use ors. Uh, I want it to be uh, uh, an application name can be any of these three. But if I wanted to exclude two people's names, here I would I would use. Um, an and for the second one because I don't want it to be like somebody else and I don't want it to be like George whatever but in my case so uh, so the general rule is whenever you start a new column name you use and and then it depends on what kind of filtering you're doing whether the the continuing columns for that column, uh, the continuing rows for that column name, or and or. So we've got this uh, text data is where your SQL uh, statements are. So you can uh, filter out certain types of SQL statements, and so forth. So there are filters that are set up. So now I'm going to click on OK. And now we see this, uh, the trace has started. Please perform the website or desktop action. After the action completes, click the stop button to end the trace. So we bring up this application that we're trying to get the SQL behind. And I click on the uh, save button. To, it just saves everything in the application. And that was what I was trying to trace. So now I come back and I stop the trace and now it's written that uh, trace file out to that folder that we specified and it's gathering all the um, SQL profiler puts it, every SQL in a, a different uh, row and this has gathered all those rows and put them into uh, Notepad formatted it nicely so now I can just take it Control A, Control C, and open up uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, get a new window. Control V, and um, 
So now I'm running this against the Ideal Automate database to see what was going on behind that application when I click the Save button. And it shows me all the uh, SQL clearly that was running. It was using Entity Framework, so it has this uh, goofy extent thing. But uh, and it shows me the output. This got all the uh, all the scripts that I had in Ideal Automate uh, that I could run. So that's what the SQL is doing. Thanks for watching.